good to see so many of you fine people come out on this beautiful day to stand up for your rights and freedoms, which are being squandered away in Washington. I thank you for your persistence and your dedication to the battle at hand. Alexander Hamilton said, effective resistance to usurpers is possible only provided that citizens understand their rights and are disposed to defend them. Tom Periello is usurping our constitutional rights for each vote he casts for larger, more expansive government, and I intend to see that he is held accountable for the mockery he is making of the conservative voters in the fifth. You may clap, thank you. <laughs> We're all in this together, folks, so join right in. It's also a great day to be an American, especially a Virginian, because on Tuesday next week, we're going to send a message to the liberals in Washington that they need to listen to the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia and to the people of America that we have had enough of irresponsible, massive deficits and out of control, wasteful spending. When Bob McDonald, Bill Bolin, and Ken Cuccinelli and Rob Bell went on Tuesday, it's going to make heads turn from sea to shine and sea. And Obama has already tucked tail and run from Craig Deeds, blaming his campaign for the upcoming loss. But we know that it's due to Obama's massive spending spree and huge governmental grabs for power and control in our lives that's caused Americans to stand up and cry out for their liberty and scream at our TVs for government to get out of our lives and our businesses. Yay! Alex de Tocqueville understood this when he wrote, while democracy seeks equality through liberty, Socialism seeks equality through restraint and servitude. I'm going to let it go. The vision of the framers and the, the vision of the framers and the bedrock idea that our inalienable rights include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness does not include government restraint or servitude. Democracy is a system that thrives through free minds and free markets. This Congress and this president are criminalizing success in America. Not only that, but they are committing intergenerational theft by stealing the future of our children and grandchildren with each turn of the printing presses in Washington. $11.9 trillion is the national debt right now. There will be no American dream for them. They will become enslaved to debt and higher taxes, which limits their choices for educational and career opportunities. As we meet here today and realize that our America and our constitutional rights are under attack, we are no different than the men and women of Virginia in the 1770s who looked across the sea and wondered what was King George thinking. And they sent him their grievances, just like we've been doing with our protests and our emails and our phone calls. And he taxed them more. And he sent soldiers to live in their homes. The founders responded with the Declaration of Independence and utilized their armed militia to win a war against the strongest army in the world, to win our freedoms and frame them in a republic form of government, which they left to following generations to prosper under and also to protect. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in our bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. There's no less need today to stand up for what is right than there was years ago. The only difference is that the enemy is not from without. It is our own tyrannical President Obama with his leftist courtesars and Queen Nancy Pelosi with Prince Tommy Periello tagging along. A news reporter asked Nancy Pelosi, where in the Constitution does it say that the federal government has the power to enforce national health care on the citizens of America? Her response as Speaker of the House was, are you kidding? Seriously, she said, are you kidding? Total disconnect and lack of understanding of her place and role in government. There is no constitutional law that supports what's going on in Washington today. The Tenth Amendment says the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states and to the people. That's us, folks. So our answer is no to federalized health care, whether Nancy and Tommy think we're kidding or not. Edmund Burke said, all it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing, and that's what has happened. If we look at what Obama has done since November, we as Republicans should be ashamed for letting it get to this point. We were given both levels of government and did nothing to move conservative principles forward, and we have Washington and Richmond taxing, spending, capping, and now trying to heal all of us whether we like it or not. 
The rhinos have made a mockery of our conservative principles and cast us aside for their own political expediency. They say one thing on the campaign trail and another when they get in office, and it's got to stop. Thomas Jefferson said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. As a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, we take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. I have the privilege of chairing the annual DAR American History Essay Contest sponsored by our chapter to promote patriotism and the historical education of our children in public schools. This makes for lots of great reading over the Christmas holidays. But let me tell you that when I read these essays and I hear these boys and girls stand up to deliver their speeches, it inspires me every year to see them demonstrate their thirst for knowledge of their freedoms as they talk about Washington's troops at Valley Forge or Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. It is our job to protect those freedoms so they will be there for the next generation to continue to fight. There's a gap that God expects us as patriots to stand in, as we are the only ones with the vision and knowledge to know what we are fighting for and who the enemy is. If we do not stand in the gap, the enemy will fill the void. The we the people is being overrun by vain philosophies of socialism, liberalism, atheism, and greenism. But we, <laughs> but we will prevail. There is always hope in the hearts of true Americans where the blood of patriots still runs in our veins. One man or woman standing for goodwill will make a difference. And we are already millions strong across the nation thanks to the Tea Party people and the 912ers and the gun owners. Thanks to all these great homeschoolers who are getting out here and standing up and getting involved. We need to unite, and, uh, but we need unity and direction and motivation to step forward and do the things we are being called to do. These are the issues I stand firm on. I'll stand up for the unborn and the elderly to protect life from conception to natural death. I will defend our right to keep and bear arms as it is the freedom which protects all other freedoms. I will support lower fair taxes and less regulations on businesses and I believe in Reaganomics and an open free enterprise system. I will defend the Constitution as written and promote state rights including the right to work and strive in all ways to limit the size of government. I have three sons in the Army at Virginia Tech. My sons understand as I do that freedom is not free. We love America and consider it our duty to serve and protect our freedoms wherever we can. They will do it in the military. I will do it in Washington. George Washington noted that to be prepared for war is one of the most effectual means of preserving peace. So you better believe I support our, mili our active military and will work to secure funding to take care of our veterans when they get back home. This is an investment in peace. It's our heart. I have been active fighting. I have been actively fighting for conservative causes here in the fifth for almost 20 years now, and I'm not alone. I see many faces around the district who've been in the battle longer than I. And so, why do we do this? It's our heartfelt belief that America is good, that she is our home, the land of our forefathers, and the future of our children. We believe in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and we hate seeing the laws of our land and our flag trodden underfoot because it all costs someone, somewhere, something to give it to us. The Bible says there is no vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Our president says we are not a Judeo-Christian nation anymore. He has lost his vision. He has lost his vision. Let's not lose our vision of conservative, common-sense government. A quote from the National Republic states, to fight for one's country when its life is threatened by violence is noble and heroic. To stand up for it in peacetime is a virtue quite as necessary. And unless there be such virtue in citizenship, our, our traditions will be forgotten, our ideals neglected, and our institutions will crumble. Let me repeat that. Our traditions will be forgotten, our ideals neglected, and our institutions will crumble. Are we not seeing that around us today? We have much to do. Let's do it together. In the words of Reagan, you and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We will preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we will sentence them to take the first step into a thousand years of darkness. If we fail, at least let our children and our children's children say of us, we justified our brief moment here. We did all that could be done. We are today's revolutionists. Freedom is not free. Please join me in the defense of the great American idea. Thank you and God bless.